Braj Gomi Shiv Dam Damaki Dabdi Mai Por Damaki Purushatam Chetra Jagana Pujamaki Ganga Mai Ki Jamuna Mai Ki Bhakti Devi Ki Tulasi Maharani Ki Sama Veta Bhakti Vrindi Ki Jai Nitai Go Premanandi All Glorious Samuris All Glorious Samuris All Glorious Samuris All Glorious Samuris All Glorious Sri Guru and Sri Guranga All Glorious Sri Paul Padi Ki Jai Krishna Samuris Krishna Samuris Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Kashi Misha Prajumna Misha Raya Bhavananda Yanhara Milani Prabhu Paila Ananda Kashi Misha Prajumna Misha Raya Bhavananda Yanhara Milani Prabhu Paila Ananda Kashi Mishra of the name Kashi Mishra Prajumna Mishra of the name Prajumna Mishra Raya Bhavananda of the name Bhavananda Roy Yanhara of whom Milane meeting Prabhu the Lord Paila got Ananda great pleasure. Translation In the list of devotees of Jagannath Puri, which begins with Paramananda Puri, Sruk Damada, Sabhabhambhacharya, and Gopinathacharya, Kashi Mishra was the fifth, Prajumna Mishra the sixth, and Bhavananda Roy the seventh. Lord Chaitanya took great pleasure in meeting with them responsibly. In the list of devotees of Jagannath Puri, which begins with Paramananda Puri, Sruk Damada, Sava Bhoma Bhattacharya, and Gopinathacharya. Kashi Mishra was the fifth, Prajumna Mishra the sixth, and Bhavananda Roy the seventh. Lord Chaitanya took great pleasure in meeting with them. Purport. In Jagannath Puri, Lord Chaitanya lived at the house of Kashi Mishra, who was the priest of the king. Later, this house was inherited by Bhakrishra Pandit and then by his disciple, Gopal Guru Goswami, who established their deity of Radhakanta. The Gauraganatesh Dipika 193 states that Kashi Mishra was formerly the gopi in Vrindavan named Krishna Balabha. Prajumna Mishra, uh, an inhabitant of Arissa was a great devotee of Lord Chaitanya Mahabhu. Prajum the Mishra was born of a Brahmana family and Ramananda Roy of a non-Brahmana family. Yet Lord Chaitanya Mahabhu advised Prajum the Mishra to take instructions from Ramananda Roy. This incident is described in the Anchalila chapter 5. Bhavananda Roy was the father of Sri Ramananda Roy. His residence was in Alalanath, Brahmagiri, which is about 12 miles west of Janath Puri. By caste, he belonged to the Karana community of Arissa, whose members were sometimes known as Kayastas and sometimes as Shudras, but he was the governor of Madras under the control of King Pratapurudra of Jagannath Puri.
Mm. So here we, we see there's um, a description of, or continuing the, actually the description of the, the devotees who are residing in Puri or serving the Lord in Puri or those who came from West Bengal to um, associate with the Lord during the, the uh, four months of the rainy season. So there's a, there's a number of devotees there. And, and if we look at this, this segment, it basically it, there's four chapters here, 9, 10, 11, 12, are all describing um, the associates of Lord Chaitanya. And there's significance there. It's not just you know, a space filler to try and just fill up you know, a few, few can, uh, chapters of, of the Chaitanya Shah reading, but actually there's a particular reason uh, why it's being described, and also why Krishna Das Kaviraj is using this figurative example of a tree, or, or uh, actually he calls it the desire tree of bhakti. Now there's a few verses I just wanted to reference here from the uh, ninth chapter, where Lord Chaitanya, he's starting to reflect, he says, my name is Vishrambhar, and Vishram, Vishrambhar means one who maintains the entire universe. Its meaning will be actualized if I can fill the whole universe with love of Godhead. Thinking like this, the Lord, the Lord brought the desire tree of devotional service to the earth and became its gardener. He sowed the seed and sprinkled water, uh, and sprinkled up upon it the water of his will. So we see here how, how Krishna's Kaviraj is describing Mahabhu as, uh, as the gardener, and, and he's actually the person who's taken charge of this desire tree of bhakti. Uh, and, and taken charge of spreading the, the process of devotional service. And he does it, you know, he, he, ma he makes the comment also in, in the beginning of the ninth chapter. He says, but I, you know, I'm only one person, so how much can I spread it? How many fruits can I pick and how many fruits can I distribute? How many fruits can I eat? So therefore, he, he uses all these associates to uh, spread this, this mission of love of Godhead. And, th and that's why it's describing, uh, this section here is describing all those persons who were engaged in spreading uh, the, the mission of love of Godhead. And there's, there's several reasons for this. One is, is, is you know, and I'll, I'll describe a few pastimes associated with these three personalities describing, who are being described here or mentioned here. But one is to glorify the, the, the characteristics and the qualities of these devotees. Another is all, all, also to show um, who are authorized representatives in the parampara. So, so we know that, okay, you know, so-and-so is coming in the line from this personality, so we can understand, actually, this is, this is an authorized line, so we can understand. It's just like I, I was, um, I sent a text to, to, to my son yesterday, he teaches yoga in Brisbane, and there's a devotee in, uh, in where is he? He's in the Netherlands. He, he teaches Sanskrit. He's a brilliant Sanskrit teacher. His name is Nittai. Nittai Nityananda. And he's a brilliant Sanskrit teacher. And he was asking me, well, is, 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 he, is he a bona fide Sanskrit teacher? And I said, yeah, well, I, I just quoted all his kind of credentials and stuff. Very, very uh, expert. So, you know, when, when you're actually teaching a, a devotional science, you know, it's just like, you know, if you're learning medicine, you want to make sure the person you're learning medicine from is, is actually qualified to teach medicine. And because there's a science, and you have to understand science from a qualified person. So it's even more so the case with bhakti, because bhakti uh, is defined by our acharyas as being the highest science. So if we want to understand this highest science, we need to understand from someone who actually understands the science. As, as Krishna declares to Arjuna uh, in the Giri, he, he says, Tadvidi pradipatena pradipristena sevya upadekshantite jnanas jnanas tatvadarshana. He's saying, you know, you approach a bona fide spiritual master, inqu uh, inquire some mystery from him, render service to him. The self-realized soul can impart knowledge to you. Why? Because he's seen the truth. So Krishna is establishing the importance in, 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 in this section of um, the parampara. Also in the beginning of the same chapter, he mentions that, you know, he, that he established the parampara or, or the, the line of, of guru and disciple. But because the line had become broken, then he had to re-establish. So again, he's emphasizing the same point of you know, the, the, the necessity of understanding spiritual science from a qualified person. And we see that there's, um, 
there's a, another verse later on in, in the Gita where it describes that uh, if people don't learn the spiritual science from an authorized tradition or from authorized scripture, it actually, actually it's not in the Bhagavad Gita, it's a verse by Rupa Goswami, it, sa it says it actually creates a disturbance in society. You know, that's all it does is create disturbance. And we see that when, when people are practicing you know, so-called spirituality and they're, they're following you know, their, basically their own idea of what is spiritual science, then this actually creates havoc in the minds of those who are inquiring, who, who, who want to find out about the spiritual science and, and, and may think that you know, the person that they're approaching is uh, an authorized or a bona fide teacher and they just become confused. They don't actually understand, they don't learn what the absolute truth is, and therefore it does not produce the fruit, does not produce the results. This is also borne out in the um, Padma Purana, where it describes Sampradaya Vihineye Mantra Ste Nishpala Mataha. That if one does not receive spiritual instruction, or it says Mantra if one does not receive spiritual instruction or mantra in a bona fide line of teachers, then nishpala, there's no fruit. And, and, and you know, we, we practice spiritual life or we practice anything because we're looking for a specific result. It's like one might go to you know, a tennis coach to learn how to play tennis. But if they're not a good tennis coach or they're, if, they're not, you know, if they don't actually understand the science, because you know, it is a science how to play sport and how to develop the physical body so it's able to do certain things. If, if the person you're, you're, you're learning from doesn't understand the science of how to do something, then then you don't actually achieve the goal, or it may take much longer to achieve the goal. So it's very important that we learn um, from the, the the proper person, and that's that's another one of the reasons I, I, I see that Lord Chaitanya is establishing, so we can understand who are um, who are the the authorized persons to learn from. And then it's a, the description in, in the um, beginning of chapter 9 goes on to describe that he, he enjoys the fruits, but he also distributes them. He distributes them liberally, liberally and, 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 and actually he doesn't ask for any, any, any price. He just distributes them freely. And this is the nature of this uh, Krishna consciousness movement given by Lord Chaitanya. If, if we look at the, the instructions of Krishna in the Gita, especially his concluding instruction, this Savada Mampriti Adya Mami Kamsharam Braja Hang Tong Sava Papavyu Moksha Sima Sucha. He says he tells Arjuna, abandon all varieties of religion and surrender to me. So he's asking he's asking Arjuna, you, you, you give up all your ideas, all, all your, your false concepts of religion and surrender to me completely. Then I'll deliver you. But Lord Chaitanya, he doesn't make any such request. He doesn't make any such uh, demands. He just, he just distributes love of Godhead freely. And all he's asking for is just chant the holy names. And that's why we see in this Hare Krishna movement, our emphasis put on the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Because it is the Yuga Dharma, not only is it the Yuga Dharma, but it is actually a very, very powerful means of deliverance. And following the, the guidance and instructions of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we can understand that if we simply take this chanting of Hare Krishna, that in, in, in time it will destroy all the anathas in the heart and it will help us to awaken our, our original love of Krishna. Um, so, we see in, in this section here, <coughs> If we, if we go back to the, to the previous chapter, we'll see that actually the previous chapter just deals about the, the, the structure of the tree and, 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 and the importance of the tree and, 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 and uh, all that. This chapter here starts off talking about the devotees in, in Bengal, the devotees who are prominent in Bengal. And that goes on for quite a few verses. And then up to about, I can't remember what number verse, but then, then we see that Krishna's Kaviraj talks about the devotees on the western side and he glorifies the, the six Goswamis and, and different devotees. So we can understand there he's talking about the devotees in Vrindavan. Because we see, we see the, the, in the ninth chapter, it talks about how um, the, the, fruit, uh, the seed was originally sown in, in, in West Bengal, particularly in, in Navadri, where Lord Chaitanya took birth, and it talks about his birthplace at the yoga pit. So this is where the seed was sown. And then, then it fructified there. And it talks about how it fructified in the form of Madhavendra Puri and Ishra Puri, and then it came down to Lord Chaitanya. But actually, Lord Chaitanya, he was the one who sowed the seed there in, um, in West Bengal. 
And from there, the, 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 uh, the, the fruit was taken to Jagannath Puri. So we see that Lord Chaitanya, he went to Jagannath Puri. And then, for, and then it describes how from there, the fruit went to, West, uh, to, to Brindavan. And so we see that when, when Lord Chaitanya performed his pastimes, uh, he, he, you know, for the first 24 years of his life, he was living in, in uh, West Bengal, particularly in the area of Navadweep or Mayapur. And he performed pastimes there. And then when it was time to spread the Sangatan mission even further, he moved to, and he took sannyas, he moved to Jagannath Puri. And then from Jagannath Puri, he visited South India, and then he also went to Vrindavan. And on, on the way, going to Vrindavan and coming back, he, he performed many uh, amazing pastimes. But all along the way, he was spreading uh, the Krishna consciousness movement. And actually we see how the whole of India was overwhelmed by this Krishna consciousness. And, and now we see how, how Krishna consciousness is spreading all around the world. I just, uh, I've just come back from visiting several temples in Australia. And uh, I, I notice in, in most of the places I visit, that actually everywhere I go, is, is that Krishna consciousness is, is expanding. And that seems just a little country like Australia. Uh, I, I was in, in the Melbourne temple. I was very, very impressed and to notice that um, every day that there's there's two children that come to class every single day, uh, and, and that's very I inspiring to me because it means that these children have actually developed a taste for hearing and chanting. They like to hear Krishna's name. They like to hear topics about the Lord. Uh, and my my realization from that was. In, in places where the, where the youth like to hear and chant, the future is very bright. Because this is the essence of the Krishna Consciousness Movement. And, and one of the stories, I, I, I'll, I'll just describe in a minute, one of the, the stories there, we can see how, as talks about Prajumna Mishra, how he was hearing the descriptions of Krishna's pastimes from Ramananda Roy, and he became ecstatic. The love of God had awoken in his heart through hearing the, uh, the pastimes of Krishna. So it's very, very wonderful um, you know, when, when, when you see how Krishna consciousness is spreading. And all this comes from uh, the, the, the appearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and, and how Krishna consciousness is spreading all around the world. I'll just read, um, because this, this, uh, this verse is talking about three specific devotees. And I'll just read, there's two, you know, two more verses that, that don't have purports. Um, so 132 states, embracing Rai Bhavananda, the Lord declared, declared to him, you formerly appeared as Pandu, and your five sons appeared as the five Pandavas. Then the next verse, 133, the five sons of Bhavananda Roy were Ramananda Roy, Patanayaka Gopanath, Kalanidhi, Sudanidhi, and Nayaka Vaninath. So sometimes, it's interesting with these names because, um, Previously, we see he's called Roy Bhavananda, and, and, and now he's been be called Bhavananda Roy. Sometimes it seems they, they interchange the, these different terms. The same with uh, Patanaika Gopinath. Usually he's called Gopinath Patanaika, but sometimes it's referred to differently. And same with Vaninath Nayaka. So I, I'm not sure, I don't really understand why these names change around like that. I'm sure there's a reason for it. Anyhow, so we see here how uh, Bhavananda Roy, he was actually Pandu. Pandu from, from Krishna Leela had, had incarnated and his five sons were the five Pandavas, Pandavas Yudhisthira, Bhima, Arjuna, Kula and Sahadev. Ramananda Roy was uh, specifically described in the Gorakandadesh Dipika as being Arjuna. Sometimes also Arjuna, Gopi or Vishaka. There's a little bit of uh, you know, uh, differences of opinion on that. Anyhow, so we see here, uh, this verse is talking about Prajumna uh, is Ramananda Roy and Kashi Mishra. So, uh, Bhavananda Roy, you know, there's a little bit of description here. I, I won't go too much into the description there. But then if you look at, um, there's a really interesting story of Prajumna Mishra in the Antilila chapter 5. Uh, Prajumna Mishra, he, he comes from a Brahmana background, uh, he's Brahmana by birth. But of course, in, in, in Gaudiya Vaishnavas, the birth is not that important. But in, 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 in Indian cultural society, birth is very, very important. But you know, in, in the, absolute, this is the absolute sense, this is actually just an external material situation. And through the process of Krishna consciousness, that, that can very easily change. And we see how our acharyas, they describe that even though one may be born as a Brahmana, 
it doesn't mean you're qualified as a Brahmin because a, a Brahmin is understood by quality, not by birth. The same as any of the varnish. You, 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 don't, uh, you don't understand your situation by birth, it's by quality. It's just like one may be born to a doctor, you know, a, a neurosurgeon, but that doesn't automatically make us a neurosurgeon. You know, we have to achieve the qualifications. So in the same way, uh, Krishna, he describes the qualifications of a Brahmin. He says, Samo dhamma tapo satcham chantarai jivajma ayavacham jnanam vijnanam mastikam brahma karma sabhavacham. So he's saying, he's talking about the qualities of Brahman, and this is how uh, brahma karma sabhavacham, that one understands the, the, the nature of a Brahmana is by the, their qualities. Anyhow, so he was, even though he was born a Brahmana, he was actually a great servant of Lord Chaitanya. And one day he approached Lord Chaitanya and asked him, please, please instruct me on the topics of Krishna. And so Mahabhu said, well, I, I'm not qualified. When I want to hear instructions of Krishna, I go and ask Ramananda Roy. And as we see here, it's being described here by, by Prabhupada, that Bhavananda Roy, the father, he was a Kayasta. Kayastas are like musicians and artists and people like that, they're, they're, and they're also managers and things like that. A little bit sort of in between, not fully a sudra, but sort of close to being a sudra. Anyhow, so um, he instructed him to go there to uh, Ramananda Roy to hear the science of Krishna. So he did that, and he, he went to Ramananda Roy's house. Ramananda Roy was, was, was previously had been the governor of, of a... Um, Madras in, in South India, Chen, it was now Chennai. And, but he, he, he came to uh, a research to, uh, to Puri to meet with Chaitanya Mahabhu and he, he just gave up all his service as a governor and just stayed there in Puri. And you know, the, the king gave him a house, etc. And so he went to, he went to, Prajum the Mishra went to see Ramananda Roy. And then he, he was, he, the servant said, oh, Ramananda Roy is looking after some of the Devadasis from the temple. And you know, presumably the Mr. waited for some time, but you know, he he heard about you know him looking after Devi Dasis, and this this was disturbing his mind. And and he kind of felt, well, how can I take instructions from such a person? And so what Ramananda Roy was doing is, there's Devi Dasis are an interesting um, class of persons. They actually are young women who basically from birth dedicate their life to the service, service of Jagannath. They don't get married, they don't have families, anything like that. They just give them lives, their lives completely to the service of Jagannath. So they're, they're trained basically from birth how to serve Lord Jagannath. And one of the things they do is they perform various dramas and dances for the pleasure of the deity. But they, they, they you know, like I said, they're, 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 they're young virgin ladies, they never get married or anything like that, have families, whatever, and just, just their whole life is Jagannath. And so Ramananda Roy had written a drama. I'm not sure which drama it was, but he, he wrote the, the Jagannath Priya Nathakam, but I don't know if it was that drama or not. Instructing these young ladies, these beautiful young women, how to, you know, do, do the acts or, or to, do, to do the drama. Uh, but pr prior to that, prior to him instructing, he was actually massaging the, their bodies with oil and, and bathing them and, and, and cleansing their, their entire body. And, and, and Mahabhu, later on, he reflects to, um, to Prajum the Mishra that he must have been touching their private parts. But, so Prajum the Mishra was a little bit disturbed by this and so he went away. And it, actually what happened is, is Ramananda Roy came out and he met Ramananda Roy and he said, oh, I've seen you now, I'm happy, I'm happy to go. And then he, he went back to Chaitanya Mahabhu and he said, so did, did you ask him about the topics of Lord Chaitanya, uh, Lord, Lord Krishna? And, he, and, and then he explained to Mahabhu what had happened. And then Mahabhu started to glorify uh, Ramananda Roy and said, actually, he, he, he's, he's completely on the transcendental level. You know, he, he's heard the topics of the Rasa Leela, Krishna's pastimes of the Gopis, from self-realized persons, and he himself has become self-realized, so much so that he no longer has any bodily concept of life. And, and, and Prabhupada explains it in one of the purports there, that in such a person that uh, material desires or lust desires cannot manifest. And, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu describes how, like, when when... Uh, Rama, he said, you know, for me as a sannyasi, if I see a woman, if, he, if I even hear about a woman, my mind becomes changed, my body becomes affected. He says, but Ramananda Roy, he's so transcendentally advanced that even touching the form of a woman, for him it's just like touching a piece of wood. 
that has no effect at all. So he was glorifying Ramanand Roy. Very wonderfully, in wonderful ways, he was glorifying Raman Roy. And he said, you know, because this was the next day that, that, um, that Prajum the Mishra had come to see him. So he said, no, you go back now, he's, he's in his assembly room, you go back now and you see him. And, and so then, then he, he went back there and, and he, 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 uh, uh, he said to him, tell him that I sent you. And, and, and um, so, so Prajum the Mishra, he went back there to see Ramananda Roy. And he said that, oh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sent me to ask you topics about Krishna. And as soon as, as, soon as Ramananda Roy had heard that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had sent Prajum the Mishra, he, was, he just became overwhelmed with ecstasy and he started to just you know, say, well, you know, what do you want me to, to, to speak to you? He said, look, uh, and Prajum the Mishra was saying, look, I'm just a dull, wood-headed person. I have no idea. You, you just instruct me as you feel. And so, so then Ramananda Roy took him to a, a, a secluded place. This, was a, this must have been in the morning because it says afternoon came, then evening came. So it must have been in the morning this occurred. So then he went there uh, and so they went to a secluded part in the garden and Ramananda Roy started to uh, instruct him in the way of asking questions and answering the questions because Prajum the Mishra was just you know, completely absorbed and, and that this, this discussion was so enlivening. This is a really important part about this pastime is how these two devotees became completely absorbed in the topics of Krishna Kata. And it's the same, the same as there for us. If we are able to absorb ourselves in the topics of Krishna Kata, then all external identification, all external connection will cease. It will just evaporate because the, the potency of Krishna's pastimes, the potency of Krishna's holy name is such that it can completely eradicate any connection with the material world. And so we see how Raman the Roy, he, he was engaged in this conversation like this, and Prajum the Mishra just became absorbed in the ecstatic love of Krishna. And so the discussion went on till the evening. And then, and then uh, what happened was uh, uh, Raman the Roy's servant came and mentioned to Raman the Roy, actually, you know, the, the day has ended. You know, you have to pursue your other activities. So, so then, you know, uh, Prajum the Mishra took his leave, he thanked him, he took his leave, he went home, he bathed, he had his meal, and then he went to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he was just like glorifying Ramananda Roy. It's like, wow, I just can't believe such a Vaishnava. You know, he has such taste for hearing the names of speaking about Krishna. And, he, 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 and actually, what Ramananda Roy had told Prajum the Mishra, he said, is actually, these are not my words. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was speaking through me. So we see, even though he was so absorbed in, in, in the pastimes and speaking the pastimes so wonderfully, he was not taking credit for it himself. He was saying, this is all the mercy of Krishna, or all the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that I'm able to speak like this. And we see, you know, any great Vaishnava that we, we, we read about, same with Srila Prabhupada. You know, Prabhupada was, was speaking, uh, you know, from the Bhagavatam. He said, but actually, this is not me. Krishna is making me right. This is, this is, this is Krishna is, is uh, empowering me to do this. Same we see with... Um, What's his name? <sighs> Names escaped me. Who's, who's Prabhupada give, give credit, uh, give, uh, dedicate the Bhagavad Gita to? Balave Vidya Bhushana. When he wrote the Govinda Bhasha, in the, in the opening verses of Govinda Bhasha, he, he said how, how this is not me speaking, but actually Govinda Dev is speaking through me. So that we see in the lives of great Vaishnavas, they never take the credit for themselves, even though they're doing such amazing service. And this is also a lesson for us in humility uh, to understand how uh, not to take credit for things, but actually understand how this is all going on by the mercy of the Lord. So, you know, we, we, we see that uh, Prajum the Mishra, he was um, very, very um, overwhelmed by, by these pastimes. He, he said to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you, you have drowned me in the ecstasy of Krishna's pastimes. He was just so... You know, affected by that. It was a very, 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 very wonderful pastime. And then also we have here, so that's Prajum the Mishra and Bhavana and Roy. And, and, and the, the fifth branch of the tree that re, who resided in Puri was Kashi Mishra. Kashi Mishra is quite a, an important personality in, in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. He's actually the guru, of, or the, what they call the Raj Guru, the guru of Prataparudra Maharaj. So he's a very important personality. And when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came from 
Bank, West Bank Gulf from Mayapur and, and moved to, uh, relocated to Puri. He first resided in the house of, of um, Sababorn Bhattacharya for, for some time, Pro- probably two or three years, I think. And, and, and we, we, we see, we see you know, in many wonderful pastimes performed there. But then when, when, he, when, he, um, when he went on his South India tour, then Sababorn Bhattacharya heard he was coming back, so he asked, he asked the king, I think he asked the king, yeah, he asked the king, Pratipurudan Maharaj, um, that, you know, the, the, the Lord is coming back and um, we need to find him a, a quiet place, a calm place where, where he can reside. And so, um, so then this is described in the Majalila chapter 10, where, where uh, Sababorn is said, His Holiness Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will return shortly. I, I wish to have a, a nice place ready for him, a place solitary and peaceful. Lord Chaitanya's residence should be very secluded and also near the temple of Jagannath. Please consider this proposal and give me a nice place for him. The king replied, Kashi Mishra's house is exactly what you require. It is near the temple and very secluded, calm and quiet. After saying this, the king became very anxious for the Lord to return. And, and, and so then, then um, uh, he, he informed the, the Kashi Mishra and Kashi Mishra was, felt himself very fortunate. Now, Kashi Mishra's house is what we now know as the Gambira, or Radhakanta Mata. The, 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 he installed the deity of uh, Radhakanta, and then later on, Gopal Guru, because actually the, the deity of Radhakanta was, uh, uh, was originally worshipped, or Sri Kanta, was originally worshipped in the Puri temple. But then at one point, uh, I think it was Sarvabhoma had a dream where Jagannath came to him and he was complaining about this Sri Kanta. He's, he's saying, he, he steals all the nice things from my plate and I don't get anything nice to eat, so if you please relocate him. And then so uh, the, 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 the uh, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya told this to, to Kashi Mishra, uh, actually no, told this to the king. And so the king uh, asked Kashi Mishra to take the deity of Sri Kanta to his house. And then as we see here, it's described in this purport, Vakrishra Pandit inherited the house and then from him his, his disciple Gopal Guru inherited the house. And then Gopal Guru uh, installed the, the, the deity of Radharani next, next to uh, Sri Kanta. And Gopal Guru is quite an important personality in, in Gaudiya Vaishnavism. He, he's one of the, there's three, three personalities who, who wrote Paradis in, in terms of you know, Archana Paradis and he, he wrote a very prominent Archana Paradi. I don't remember the, the names of the other two, but there's three pr- pr- prominent parties. So then, um, also the, this this uh, this temple, this uh, house was not very far from from the temple of, of uh, Jagannath, and, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spent the last 12 years of his his, his life there. So he, he must have resided at the house of, of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya for a few years because he only spent 12 years here and he was 24 years in Puri and Vrindavan and, and, and touring South India. So it would have been several years that he, he was in the house of of, um, of Ramananda, uh, of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and then he spent, as it says, he spent 12 years here at the house of Kashi Mishra. But then there's a, there's a few really um, interesting pastimes um, uh, between um, Chaitanya Mahabhu and Kashi Mishra. One, one pastime in particular is, is two of, well actually all, all of Bhavananda Roy's sons were engaged by, by Prataparudra Maharaj in various uh, activities. And Ramananda Roy, Gopinath Patanaika and Vaninath Naika were all in, in the role of, uh, uh, of uh, at least Gopinath Patanaika, uh, Ramananda Roy was a, was a governor, Gopinath Patanaika was a tax collector, and Vaninath Roy also had a prominent position, but I, don't, I can't remember what it was. Well, Vaninath Naika had a prominent position, but I don't remember what it was. And yeah, so with Gopinath Patanaika, he, he was a tax collector, and the, 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 the way it happened was that he collected taxes and, and he had to give a certain amount to the king. But somehow or other, he, uh, he spent the money and wasn't able to, to give everything to, to um, to the king, but uh, King, king Prataparudra wasn't so bothered by this because he, he's a great devotee, he, he, he's a, you know, the son of Bhavananda Roy and, and Prataparudra Maharaj had the utmost respect for Bhavananda Roy because he realized he was a very, very advanced devotee of Krishna, so he didn't take this very seriously. But then, um, 
Prasparu Maharaj's eldest son, Purushottam Dev, he, he, was, he wanted to recoup this money. But he had, he, and he had a very interesting physical quirk where he used to, he like had a, 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 something in his neck where he'd do things like this and look up at the air and stuff like that. And then so at one point he, he, uh, he was collecting, he was trying to you know, re- recoup these funds from uh, Gopinath Patanaika. And, and then um, Gopinath Patanaika said, look, I, ha- I have some horses here which you, you, you can take. I don't have the money right now, but you can take these, these very good quality horses from me and, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll repay the, the funds over some time. And then uh, <coughs> what happened was, <coughs> excuse me, um, the, the, um, the, the king's son, Purushan Dev, he, he, he offered him a really low price for the horses, like, like, tried to lowball him basically. And, uh, and, and then, then Gopinath Patanaki made a comment. He said, look, there's nothing wrong with these horses. At least they don't, they don't do this and look up in the sky. <laughs> and then Prashtam Dave became really offended by that, you know. And, and then, then, then so he, um, he, he approached the king about it. And he said, he said you know, I, I want to recoup this money from this, this person. He, he, he's, he, you know, not doing the right thing by you. And, and, and then the king said, just use whatever means you need to. To recoup the money, so he he, he said, oh, "Great, I'm going to chuck him on the changa." <laughs> and so, the changa is a really uh, barbaric type of a torture. It's not torture, but it kills people. Is what they do is they get upraised, you know, swords, and they bury the hilt of the sword in the ground, so the, the blades are sticking out of the, of the ground. Many swords, and they tie the person onto a bamboo bamboo platform, and they drop the bamboo platform onto the swords and so the swords just go straight through the person's body and so he was on on this platform just about to be killed and, and like you know he wasn't bothered by it he wasn't at all disturbed this is give us an indication of how great the devotee is and he's just you know taking shelter of lord chaitanya and chanting the holy names because later we see lord chaitanya asked him what were you doing when this was happening he says i was chanting Hare krishna so he wasn't affected by it and he didn't mind if this was his destination and and and, and you know that this first tattainu kampam susha mikshmano is quoted in this regard saying how the devotee he never fears any condition of life because he understands it's coming about due to my past misdeeds therefore he just takes shelter of the lord and we see that gopinath patanaika was uh showing this example <coughs> and then yeah so what happened was uh, four of the servants of Gopinath Patanaika at different times, they went to Chaitanya Mahabhu and asking Chaitanya Mahabhu, please save Gopinath Patanaika, he's your devotee, you have to save him. Chaitanya Mahabhu became disturbed by this, not because Gopinath Patanaika was, was on, the, on the Changa about to be killed, but because you know, he's a sannyasi. It's like, why are you just disturbing me? You know, he's, he's just bearing the fruits of his karma here. You know? Anyhow, so um, then at, at some point, uh, that's right, I think Kashi Mishra went to the king and the king was shocked. It's like, why is this happening, you know? Why, 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 uh, why is uh, Gopinath Patanaika being, being about to be killed? You know, and he stopped it immediately. So he, he, he I actually, no, I think, I think the, it was some official of the kingdom, the kingdom came and then spoke to the king. So he said, stop it immediately. And then so, uh, I can't remember the exact sequence of the conversation with Kashi Mishra went to Chaitanya Mahabhu first or he went, he went to um, um, Prataparudra Maharaj first. But essentially what was, was happening was, was, there was a, there was a dialogue going on and, and Kashi Mishra was kind of functioning like, a bit like a messenger between, um, between Chaitanya Mahabhu and, and Maharaj Prataparudra. And it's a really wonderful dialogue because <coughs> we, we can see how um, uh, Kashi Mishra under, understands the mind of Chaitanya Mahabhu and, and when he went to Chaitanya Mahabhu he was saying that you know because what happened was was um, when when Prataparudra Maharaj heard what had happened and how his son was trying to 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 kill uh, uh, well actually he said he was trying to scare him well, was pretty scary you know he put him on his thing to throw him on the swords and when he, when he heard that this was happening and, and, and why it had happened, he, he said, you know, I immediately resolve, absolve his family of any debt. I give him back this, this, this areas of tax collection and I double his income. And, and he actually awarded him a, 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 a special silk wrapper from, from, from Jagannath. So he, you know, he, he honored him very greatly. And then so when, when Kashi Mishra went and reported this to Chaitanya Mahabhu, Chaitanya Mahabhu was, was very concerned 
because uh, he felt that the adjustment had been made because, you know, of my involvement. And he said, therefore, I want to leave this area. And so that night, or actually pre prior to this, actually, um, because Pratip Purudamaraj was the disciple of Kashi Mishra, so every evening, when he, when he was in Puri, every evening he would come and massage uh, the feet of his guru. And so at that time, you know, Kashi Mishra would talk about various things with Pratip Purudamaraj. And, and so then one, he hinted uh, 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 to, to Pratip Purudamaraj that actually Chaitanya Mahabhu, he wants to leave and, and move to Lalanath. And, and Pratip Purudamaraj was so concerned about this. He, he said, you know, he said, I'd rather give up my kingdom, I'd rather give up my family, I'd rather give up everything I have than lose, uh, or than, than have Chaitanya Mahaprabhu leave the kingdom. He said, do, do whatever you have to do to ensure that he stays here. So that's when he went and spoke to him about uh, this situation. And, and, and you know, Kashi Mishra was very uh, expert and he, as I said he, he understood the mind of Chaitanya Mahabhu so he was able to explain to Chaitanya Mahabhu in such a way that Mahabhu understood that you know that Pratipurva Maharaj was not um, relinquishing this debt or, or you know giving up the debt to to uh, Baninath Padanaika because of his connection with Chaitanya Mahabhu but because of his affection for the family and how he saw Bhavananda Roy like a member of his own family so it was out of that affection and, and, you know, so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was satisfied and so he stayed there in, in, in Puri. Yeah, so very, very wonderful uh, pastimes of these, these three great personalities. And it's really wonderful for us to have the opportunity to hear about and discuss these things because it, it helps us to uh, deepen our uh, faith in the process of Krishna consciousness and also our attachment to hearing and chanting about the Lord's pastimes. I've finished there. Any, any questions or comments, Maharaj? Anything to add? Yeah. Very well done, Karani Prabhu. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a small. I don't know if it's downstairs. There's a small room there which you generally don't get to go into, and, and, and those things, you know, Mahabhu's shoes and, and, and those things, they're, they're in a box outside. Yeah. I, I mean, I've heard it's downstairs, but I haven't read a description where it says it's downstairs. It just it just says in the description I read that there was a small room where Chaitanya Mahabhu stayed, which was the Gambira whether it's downstairs or not. I mean, that's, that's what they tell you when you go there. Okay. That the, the, the Gambira was actually downstairs in a basement. Oh, I can't remember the thing, yeah. Yeah. That's what they tell you when you go there, but, but it describes how, like you read the pastimes, there, there was windows. Well, there's a window in that room. So if it was, if it was a basement, it's unlikely there was a window. So uh, I, I don't know. It's, so, sometimes, sometimes the things you hear when you go visiting these places don't actually line up with the pastimes. You know, and, and, and just just like you know the Janmastam, the Janmastam in in in, uh, in Mathura. You know what, what's promoted as being the Janmastam according to the Gaudi Math is not. I think I went there with with with, with my song or something. I'm not sure, but we we found out that there's, behind that there's a Gaudi Math. And they're, they're saying that this is where the Janmastan is, but it's not very well known. You know, so it's often the case when you go to these places, is the original... Like you go to, you go to Mayapur, for instance, right? That, they'll claim that Navadvip, that is the place where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, but actually, no, it's on the other side of the river. But, you know, because they're shifting course of the river and that Navadvip's no longer there, you know, it just changes around and things get lost in antiquity sometimes. Yeah, 
Well, we see that when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went there, um, that he, he bathed in, in, a, in a puddle in a field and he declared it to his, his associate at that point in time that this was Radha Kund. And he visited various other places and, and, and you know, established that these were the holy places. And then when the Goswamis went there, they found, you know, this information, they found out this information. And, and so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed to them where these places were and he told them to excavate these places. And of course, you know, by, by, by study. But see, the thing is, like, we see it's revealed in, in the um, Sadhga Swami Astakam, that they very scrutinizingly studied the revealed scriptures. So, so, you know, like oftentimes when people, you know, declare this is this, this, that, it either has a material motive, i.e. they want to make money out of it, or it's they, they haven't really studied things very deeply. But the Goswamis, they studied the scriptures very deeply and they found out where these various places were uh, based on the descriptions given in the scriptures, but also from what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed. And you know, you see other times like, um, you know, when when was it Jagannath Das Babaji, when he went to um, Mayapur one time, and he he he, he was he was somewhat, um, you know, he had some physical issues with his body, so they used to carry him in a basket. But when when they got to one place in in, in uh, which is now where the yoga pits established, and um, he he jumped out of the basket, and he started chanting, dancing in ecstasy. And saying that this is actually the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So through also through divine realization that one's able to understand these things. But obviously that takes a very, very elevated soul. So there's different different ways that the place has become revealed. Also we see Thakur Bhaktivinod, you know, he, he had, um, uh, when he was in his house at Surup Ganji, he had a, had a vision of Mayapur. Uh, and also, you know, the, 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 the whole... Uh, uh, what is that verse? Uh, that that book, you know, where Chait, where where um, Nityananda is going through around the Dharma with Jiva Goswami, my poor Dharma. So this is a revelation that that Bhakti Thakur he, he saw this as a revelation. So also, you know, the greatly advanced souls have revelations like that. So there's different ways that it's revealed. But the main the main point uh, with with all these pastime places is, is not so much is this the physical place or not. I mean, obviously there, there's some merit to that, but the main point for us as, as Gaudiya Vaishnavas is the smarana, it, it, is that it, it helps us to remember Krishna's pastimes and also as, as, as a part of remembering Krishna's pastimes, we glorify Krishna's pastimes and become more attached to Krishna and hearing and chanting his holy name. That's the essence of it. It's like whether it was this place or that place, you know, I mean, Advaita Acharya, he declared to the Lord, he said, my dear Lord, wherever you are, that is Vrindavan. So, and also where, wherever Krishna's pastimes are being glorified and wherever the devotees are being um, served and glorified, that is also in Dao. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much. Shura Prabhupada ki, Samaveta Bhaktivinaki, Jai Nitai Go Premanandi.